Does the new Gas Gas ECC live up to the hype? Let's find out. Riders, welcome to my two week review of the Gas Gas ECC paired with the SRAM powertrain motor and system. And if you're a fan of the channel, you would know I've got quite a few fancy e-bikes in the stable. And without a doubt, when I've been riding this bike, this has created the most hype. People are stopping me, taking photos with it. So I thought I had to do a review of this beast. And in this video, we're gonna go over the specs and the geo of the bike. And then we're gonna head out to my local trails, POV style, and I'm gonna commentate and review this bike while smashing down downhills. So the new Gas Gas ECC is rolling on 29 wheels, 170 of suspension up front and 160 in the rear, powered by the new SRAM powertrain motor with the Bros Mag S with 90 Nm of torque, a 630 watt hour battery, and you can also get a 250 watt hour range extender. My test bike is coming in just over 24 kilos with Schwabi Tacky Chance front and rear. It's available in three sizes and three models, starting from 7,000 euros. So what we're looking at here is the Gas Gas ECC6, but it's not exactly a stock model. This is a SRAM press bike, and it was sent out to us because right now at Sam's Bikes, we're doing the biggest e-bike motor test that's ever been done on YouTube, or especially at Sam's Bikes. And in the coming weeks, we are crowning the best e-bike motor system for 2024. Subscribe to the channel, you don't wanna miss it. So massive shout out to SRAM for sending this bike out. And SRAM actually told me, this is one of the first models that was in Europe. And it's actually a prototype. And you'll see, I am holding on the battery cover with a bit of Velcro there. I have had a little bit of problem with that, but I've been told it's only in the prototypes, not in the production models. And let's look at some geometry numbers in a medium, which I've been testing and I'm 183 centimeters. We've got reach of 475, 64 degree head tube angle, 75 degree C tube angle, a stack of 663, a BB drop of 31.5, and a chain state of 461. And before we head out to the trail, a massive shout out to Schwabi, the long-term sponsor at Sands Bikes. Without Schwabi, Sands Bikes is not possible full stop. And you will see, on the Gas Gas, we've got Tacky Chan's ultra soft front and rear in the super gravity because this bike is a super enduro bike and these are the best tires for the job. Anyway, massive shout out to Schwabi. Let's get out to the trails. Okay, legend riders, welcome to my local trails in Madrid. And this is the two week review on the Gas Gas ECC6. Well, with tram parts on it. And first off, what about the appearance? So without a doubt, this has to be the bike that's got the most attention out on the trails that I think I've ever had. People stopping me, taking photos. It's definitely a very good looking bike. You will notice in the B-roll at the start of the video, I don't have the flares on. The bike didn't come with the flares, which I'm not too disappointed about. I would say they look good, but I don't think they're that functional. Plastic flares on an e-bike, nah, no thanks for me. So more importantly, how does it ride? Well, it's an enduro bike, so it's definitely in its element enduro riding, and that's what we're doing today. And it's stiff, stable, long chain stay, likes to huck, you. It's definitely in its element open, fast trails. And you know, 29er, Long chain stay, 462, I believe. It is harder to tip it into corners, but you know, you can't have everything. And the 29er and the 160 at the back, long chain stay, when you huck off drops, or you know, when you have to, when you're jumping, the back wheel does hit you in the ass. And it's probably, it's pretty bad. Like I did one drop that I always do, and the back wheel hit me so bad in the butt, it really almost pushed me into an endo. So you have to change your body position. So if I'm comparing it to something else I've ridden of late, I would say the Crafty XR from Mondraker comes to mind. Definitely fast, stable. I wouldn't say exactly playful, 
you know, it's a long bike, 29ers, but you know, it is really good on the right trails, open fast. It's a trail eater, it's a trail monster. And less aggressive trails, you know, it's a big bike. It's probably more suited to someone that is newer to riding. You're gonna find it on like a trail center, absolutely fine. Jumping, I found this bike likes to stay on the ground. I wouldn't say it's an amazing jumper, but I haven't had the bike long enough. And would I take it to a bike park? I would say absolutely yes. 170, 160, this is definitely gonna be very happy at a bike park. Okay, so the first downhill is done and we're climbing back up. So how does the bike climb? And more importantly, how is the new SRAM powertrain motor and system? And right, as you will see, I have my iPhone set up here on my handlebars with my quad lock and I have notes about everything because there's a lot to talk about. And right, as if you wanna jump forward to any part of the video, there will be timestamps and a massive shout out to Quadlock, the long-term sponsor at Sam's Bikes. And riders, there is a 10% discount code if you wanna check it out in the show notes. And if you buy anything, use that code because it definitely supports Sam's Bikes. So first off, how does it climb? Well, it's a long base 29er. So we've got, you know, like a reach of 475, chain stay of 462, 29er front and back. It climbs really well. Probably, like I would say the seat tube angle is 75, it's not the steepest. It's quite comfortable to climb on fire roads. If it gets really steep and techy, we've got 170 at the front, so we are pushed off the mountain a little bit. I wouldn't say it's the best technical climber, but on fire roads, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so now on to the SRAM powertrain, which was released, I wanna say like three, four, five months ago. So it's a SRAM system, but it is based off the Bros Mag S motor which has 90 Nm of torque and 680 watts of peak power. And also, SRAM are offering auto shift with this system, which is interesting, but I'm gonna say for me, I have tried it. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of auto shifting in the, or I haven't tried the Shimano, but I just don't think auto shifting is ever gonna be for me because maybe on a fire road, it's fine, but when you're doing techie climbs, you climb with your body. You don't climb just changing gears. You move your body back and forth. You're all over the bike. I just don't think auto shifting is really gonna ever work for my style of riding. Anyway, so back to the system. So the SRAM powertrain, so this, the gas gas comes with a 630 watt hour battery, but you can get a 720 and you can also get a 250 watt hour range extender, which is great. I would say on this system, on this enduro bike, I probably would have preferred the 720 uh, because 630 is a little bit short for me. So if I got the gas gas, I would definitely be getting the range extender because most of my mates have 750s or 800 watt hour batteries. And we do ride in the Sierra de Madrid and we normally ride till our batteries are dead. So I would need that extra bit of extension. Um, so how does the motor feel? Well, it feels really natural. I think the SRAM engineers have absolutely nailed the tune. Sorry, natural, well, it's between natural and mechanical. And if you jump on it and you have ridden a Levo before, it is quite similar to the base tune on the Levo. I'm gonna say the powertrain does have a bit more of an overrun, somewhere between the Specialized and the, Bro and the Bosch race. Maybe it's like a meter overrun, maybe not a meter, but it does have a bit more overrun. And SRAM went pretty hard on the marketing with the 680 watts of peak power. Now this, this motor is really powerful, but I don't feel it any more powerful than the Specialized system or the Bosch system. Maybe it is a little bit, but I don't notice it out in the trails, especially like I've ridden this for two weeks now. I've ridden it with riders on the Bosch, with the Levo as well, and when we're climbing, just I don't notice much of a difference. So I did mention the bike I've been testing is a prototype. It's been in Europe for like six months, and I have had a problem with the battery cover. Um, I've had to use some Velcro to tie it down. Um, but you know, overall, I've noticed the bike to be reasonably noisy um, when I'm going downhill, and I don't know if it's the bike or the motor. Um, and something else that's quite interesting is the spider, so the chain ring, 
just keeps, it's constantly moving. So when you stop pedaling and you're freewheeling, it just constantly moves. Maybe that's a reason it's making noise when you're going downhill, I don't know. Um, I'd need more time and probably a different system to know if it's the bike or the motor. And probably one of the biggest disappointments for me with this system is there's only two modes. So you have rally and range. And when you're in the application, you can't really do too much tuning. You have two settings within both assistant modes to do some tweaking. And for me and my style of riding, uh, I kind of, I would like to have at least three. And I kind of think this bike is screaming for like some type of micro tune or fine tune um, like Specialized and Shimano has. Um, and also another thing, so on the pods on the left, so the top button is for the assistant mode and the bottom button is for your seat. Now, if you try and change that assistant mode and you get the wrong button, sometimes, and I've had it, you get the seat up your butt. Um, so yeah, I think SRAM really should put a dedicated um, assistant remote for this bike. All right, back down for the second downhill. So overall, I think SRAM has done a good job. Uh, if you look at SRAM over the last couple of years, they really are almost dominating. They even have good brakes now. I, if I'm honest, I was expecting a bit more from this system, but I do also think we're gonna see upgrades and this is just the start and the beginning. Okay, on to suspension. So, unfortunately this bike didn't come with the WP suspension or the collab from uh, DVO. Um, I was quite excited to try that, but it has come with the new Vivid at the back, the Vivid Air and the Zeb with the Buttercups and great setup. If I'm being 100% honest, I did find it kind of difficult to set up and I wouldn't say I've dialed the suspension yet. The suspension on the Gas Gas is a standard four bar. Don't have a lot to say. The suspension is not good or bad. Uh, I think it just needs a bit more dialing from me and I have been super busy doing this motor test. I would say one thing about the Vivid, it is very plush off the top. It does sit up in its travel and it does feel coil-like. I'm not gonna say it's a coil feeling shock, but it is definitely coil-like. And if I compare it to the X2, I would say it's probably a little bit better. So yeah, big fan of the Vivid and also riders, it's worth noting that if you wanna adjust your rebound out in the trail, you're gonna need a thin Allen key because you cannot get into that space. Now let's go on to sizing. So I'm 183 centimeters on a good day and I opted for the medium. And I tend to be riding more medium bikes these days. So the medium has a reach of 475 and for a big enduro bike, I just prefer like a shorter bike, but you know, each their own. So we've got the large, so it does come in three sizes. It's got the large with 500 mil reach, the medium 475, a less experienced rider or someone that just wants to plow is probably going to be happier on the large. And if you want to play a little bit, because this bike is already a bit of a bust, get the shorter one and slice down. And the Gas Gas ECC comes in three models, starting from Hock, uh, starting from 7,000 euros up to 10. Always the middle spec is where you see the value, the bottom spec. I, it's not bad. It's not coming with the new SRAM derailleur. I'd be going for the middle spec or the top spec if you can. And now not all gravy, the things I'd like to see improved on the gas gas. First up, I'd love to see a flip chip making it mullet compatible because it is a long bike. Uh, also found the bike reasonably noisy, uh, which did surprise me. But as I said that it is a prototype, so Maybe the production models aren't as noisy. Uh, the battery cover, look, I think that battery cover, even if it's not gonna fall off, is gonna get full of dirt and crap. I'd like to see a proper seal on it. And also for my style of riding, I would definitely want a dedicated assistant mode with at least three assistant modes. Um, so, who's it for? 
Well, I see this bike perfect for someone that wants to shred, what's here, up and down, do big enduro trails, doesn't want the bike too playful, wants it planted fast and stable. Also, for a moto lover or a gas gas lover, I can imagine this bike right next to another gas gas motorbike in someone's garage, definitely for the gas gas lover. So now to the conclusion. So I've been on the gas gas for two weeks. I've also been really busy riders with the motor test. I would love to spend more time on this bike, but unfortunately, whoa, unfortunately, we've got a rock slab here. Unfortunately, the bike has to go back to SRAM like in three days. So I think Gas Gas have done a great job. Like this really is their first e-bike. Like their other bikes were pretty average and definitely didn't do Gas Gas as the brand proud. Uh, I think they've done a great job. I think there is room for improvement. And with the SRAM powertrain, again, I think for their first crack, they've done a great job. Also room for improvement. So overall had a great time. And like always riders, if you have any questions on this bike or any other e-bike, put them in the comments, love to help out. And you know it riders, stay safe out there and we are gonna see you next week.